laws of the Old Testament. The only person to live life up to the standard of, the, of this thrice holy God is Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ. So when Jesus went to the cross, it was a perfect sacrifice and that's the only sacrifice that God will accept. Because a sinful man cannot take away the sin of another sinful man. Every other person born of a man and a woman, they are born in sin. They are born with a propensity to sin and born with a sinful nature. It doesn't matter who it is. As long as you were born of a man and a woman, you were born with the nature of sin. The only person who lived a righteous, holy, blameless life is Jesus Christ. And it's only the, sac the sacrifice of Jesus Christ is the only sacrifice that would be. the sacrifice to pay for the seed of humanity would not count because it's from a spiritually dead man. Every person born of Adam and Eve were born with a sinful nature. Every person born of Adam and Eve were born spiritually dead. That spiritually dead person cannot go to the cross to pay for the price of the sin of humanity. A spiritually dead person cannot raise another spiritually dead person from that death. It's like if somebody needs to borrow money. You don't go to a person that you know that they don't have the money because they cannot give you what they don't have. You go to Jesus because Jesus Christ is the author of eternal life. You go to Jesus because Jesus Christ, the blood that he shed on the cross, that blood was not tainted with sin. That blood was perfect, that blood was holy, that blood was righteous. The blood of Jesus. So when Jesus shed his blood on the cross, God accepted that pain, that price. God accepted that sacrifice. On behalf of whosoever would believe. God accepted it. When the blood of Jesus Christ was shed on that cross, as far as God is concerned, whoever puts their faith in Jesus Christ, whoever puts their faith in Jesus Christ, will find salvation. Whoever puts their faith in Jesus as the Son of God. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you will be saved. The Bible says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus Christ on that cross is the payment that God will accept because
because it was the death of a righteous, holy man. Because Jesus is the Son of God. When, when God said to Adam and Eve, the day you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. As I said before, the curse of sin was extended to the entire human race. Apologies for that, sir. The curse of sin was extended to the entire human race. So you see, a day is coming. And this day comes for everyone. Day is coming when everybody stands before God. Everyone. Even the mightiest man have come and stood before God to answer. Every single person will answer for how they live their life. When you come before God, the first thing that God will say or the first question that God will ask is, what did you do with my son Jesus? That's the first thing God always asks. What did you do with my son Jesus? When you heard the gospel message, what was your response? Because right here you have eternal life being offered to you. Freely. God has gone to lens. Just so that you know that there is a set date. And God has called this day the day of judgment. And on this day, God will reveal the secrets of the hearts of men according to the gospel of Jesus Christ. On this day, how you responded to the gospel of Jesus Christ will come into question. Jesus said, if anyone would acknowledge me and confess me before men, I will confess them before my Father which is in heaven. And Jesus also said that whosoever denies me before men, I will deny them before my Father which is in heaven. So this means that when you hear the gospel message, even by not making a decision, you've actually made a decision. That's what it means. Even when you don't make a decision, even when you ignore the gospel of Jesus, just by doing that, you've actually made a decision. Because one day, you will close your eyes for the last time. One day, you will breathe your last. And on that particular day, on that particular day, you will appear before the truth of the living God. And when you appear before the true and the living God, the question that God will ask you is, what did you do with my son Jesus? Anybody who appears before the true and the living God without Jesus Christ in their life, that person would have already condemned themselves to eternal damnation. You see, 
Hell was never meant for anybody. Hell was meant for the devil and his angels. It's not God's desire to condemn anyone to hell. And I hear people ask this question all the time, like, if God is so loving, then why does he send people to hell? God has never sent anybody to hell. God has never done that. People send themselves there by rejecting the gospel of Jesus. Otherwise, God's got nothing but love for you. God loves you. God's got nothing but love for you. God loves you so much, he gave Jesus Christ to die in your place. The love of God for you is so much that Jesus came and died in your place. This is why it grieves God when you see things like suicide, when you see one kid stabbing another kid to death, when you see families breaking apart and falling apart. All of these things grieve God. Because God made you for a fantastic life. When God made you, God didn't have depression in mind. When God made you, God didn't have pain and sorrow in mind. When God made you, He didn't have any thoughts of suicide in, in mind. When God made you, he didn't have low self-esteem in mind. Those things came as a result of the sin of Adam and Eve. Those things came as a result of the rebellion of Adam and Eve. But when God made you, he made you a perfect man and God made you for a fantastic life. You don't have to commit suicide. You don't have to live life in depression. You don't have to live life in sadness and sorrow. You don't have to live life disconnected from the love of God. You don't have to. All you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with the mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If you can believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. If you can believe that, you will be saved. Salvation is found in no other person except Jesus. The one who loved you and died for you is Jesus. The one who volunteered to give his life on that cross for you is Jesus. The one who is calling out to you today through the preaching of the gospel is Jesus. The one who longs to have a relationship with you is Jesus. The one who's looking forward to that day when you come forward and say, I do is Jesus. 
the love that God has for you is so much that he sent his only begotten son Jesus Christ to die on that cross in your place when Jesus was risen from the dead he was risen from the dead by the glory of your father was risen from the dead by the power and the person of the Holy Spirit and you know what God is saying? God is saying to you today the very same power and the very same Holy Spirit by whom Jesus was risen from the dead is available to you today this is the promise that the gospel has for you the power that rose Jesus from the dead is available to you today the Holy Spirit by whom Jesus Christ was risen from the dead is available to you today. If you will confess the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. If you will call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. love that God has for you is so much. He sent his son to die for you. The love that God carries for you is so much. He sent Jesus for you. that humanity is spiritually dead people are walking about physically but spiritually dead and it's it's amazing like I get different responses when I say that but it's the truth if you want to know that humanity is spiritually dead. Just turn on the news for five minutes. Just five minutes. Because you see, the way humanity is today is not the way it has always been. People are killing each other. People hate each other. There's violence in the world. There's aggression. People commit suicide. People cut themselves. Self-harm. will take a knife and will start cutting themselves. When that happens, you know that person is spiritually dead. For a person to get to that extent. All these things that are plaguing the human race today is because humanity is spiritually dead. Because humanity is spiritually dead. Just turn on the news for five minutes. Just five minutes. You will know that humanity is spiritually dead. Physically alive, but spiritually dead. Just 
look at it just for five minutes and you will know how spiritually dead humanity is. Some of the stories are so horrendous. Some of the stories are so harrowing. Some of the stories are so hideous, they're so ugly. But in the beginning it was not so. It was never like that in the beginning. So the question you're asking yourself is, okay, so how did we end up here? That's the question. Go and read Genesis. Read about Adam and Eve. And how they sinned in the Garden of Eden. And how sin affected every single person. No, Jalof. <laughs> no, Jalof. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sorry, no, Jalof. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> when Adam and Eve did that thing there. That brought a whole new set of problems for the human race. Whole new set of problems. Whole new set of problems. This is why Jesus came. This is why Jesus came. Jesus Christ came to die in your place, to die in my place. Jesus came, he shed his blood for you. Jesus came and he shed his blood for you. If anyone needs a Bible, we've got some copies. If anyone needs the Bible, yes, bro, you're good. You're good, bro.
is the most read book in the world. Did you know that? The Bible is the most read book in the world. You might want to just get a copy and read it. looking for comfort in their lives they tend to the 